And Surah Yasin is a surah that uh, every single Muslim in the world loves. Of course, we love the whole Quran, but Surah Yasin has a special place in our hearts. And there is a reason for this. In our famous books of Hadith, in the Kutub al Sitta, there are at least five narrations about the blessings of Surah Yasin. Perhaps the most famous of them is uh, two different hadith with two different chains in which the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said that Yasin is the heart of the Quran. Both of these chains are slightly weak, but put together the concept is authentic. That Yasin is the Qalb. By Qalb here, it means the gist. By Qalb here, it means basically the summary. It is the most important. It is the literally in English, the heart of the Quran. Everything has a heart and the heart of the Quran is Yasin. There's another uh, hadith as well in Tirmidhi, which is a weak one. It goes back to Al-Hassan Al-Basri. And Al-Hassan Al-Basri is a great tabi'i, but uh, he is narrating with a missing chain. So there's a missing link in it. So at least Hassan Al-Basri said this. Whether it goes back to the Prophet or not, we don't know. It's a slightly weak hadith. And in this narration, Al-Hassan Al-Basri said, it's in Tirmidhi, that whoever recites Surah Yasin in one night, meaning in one sitting, his sins shall be forgiven. So this is another blessing. And of course, definitely the most authentic blessing of Surah Yasin. And we know this because we have multiple reports of our Salaf, our early ulama to do this. Of the most authentic reports is the one in which uh, we are told to recite Surah Yasin over those that are about to pass away. We are we're told to recite Surah Yasin over those who are about to pass away. Now, what is the message of Surah Yasin? And I only have five minutes, so I have to summarize Surah Yasin in a few minutes, inshallah. But inshallah, it will be done. And of course, much more can be said. Surah Yasin has an introduction, three parts, and a conclusion. Surah Yasin has an introduction, three parts, and a conclusion. In the introduction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the introduction the book, the Prophet, the Sirat, and the destination. Yasin and the Quran, well, Quran al Hakim. And the Prophet, إِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And what is he doing? عَلَى صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ So you have the message, the messenger, you have the way, you have the light and the guidance, and you have the destination, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the introduction that is set up. The first part of it is the past, history. The second part is the present, the signs around us. And the third part is the future, the day of judgment in heaven and hell. So in the first part, we study the story of the past. And in each of these stories, and in the introduction, and in the conclusion, there is one theme. And that is the theme of resurrecting the dead. The theme of Allah's power in being able to resurrect the dead and being prepared to meet Allah when we are resurrected. That is the essential theme of Surah Yasin. And by the way, that is why we are supposed to recite Surah Yasin upon those that are about to die. You're not going to really die, die. You're just going to die in this world, but you're going to live forever in the next world. This death is the bodily death. Your ruh lives on. So the purpose of Yasin to be recited on the dying one is actually it makes the ruh easy to depart because the ruh is being told you're going to live forever. The ruh does not die. So in the introduction, we have the reference of life and death. In the story, which is the first part of the first of the three, we have life and death because the man is killed. And then what happens? He is entering Jannah. So we have life and death over here. In the middle part, which is the signs, which is the current, the present, Allah mentions three signs. The earth and the heavens. That's the second sign. And the signs of our own creation. So we have the sign of the earth. It'll come back to life. We have the sign of the heavens and the one who is that powerful. You think life and death is a problem for the one who created the heavens and the earth? And then we have the sign of the fulk. So by the way, these three signs are very profound because the first sign is around us, the earth. The second sign, it is on top of us. It is the heavens. And the third sign, it is the miracles or the, I should say the blessings that Allah has allowed us to do, right? The, the one that is the fulk. Right? The fulk, we actually make it with our hands. It's not to the same genre as the ayah of the heavens and the earth, which Allah makes directly. But what we are able to do with our hands, Allah is saying, I gave you that knowledge. I gave you the qudra to ride the oceans, to build these cars, 
to go in airplanes, to have supercomputers. I gave you that power. And in this is an ayah, the very fact that you have these technological advancements, you didn't get it. How did you learn it? I gave you the brains, I gave you the strength, I gave you the utensils. And so all of these ayat is also a sign that I am there and I am able to do this. So these are the three signs of the present. So we have the past, we have the present, and then of course we have the uh, future. And of course the future is وَنُفِقَ فِي الصُّورِ The trumpet is blown. And then what we recited in Salat al-Isha, in أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ And then the أَصْحَابُ uh, النَّارِ are mentioned as well. So we have heaven and hell, we have resurrection. So we have past, present, and then the future. And then of course the conclusion, and the conclusion is literally hitting home. We all know the famous story of uh, 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 Ubay, the, the, the one who rejected uh, the Prophet Sallallahu that he picked up a bone and he crumpled it in his hands. And he said, Ya Muhammad, do you really think that do you think that Allah can resurrect this bones after it is crumpled in dust? And in front of the Prophet Sallallahu he crumpled the bones. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed Surah Yaseen, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقَ he thinks he's giving us an example by crumpling the bones. And he forgets his own creation. He asks who is going to resurrect the bone. So Allah quoted the Qurashi. Allah quoted him before Surah Yasin was revealed. He didn't know it was going to be revealed. He asked the question. Surah Yasin comes down as a response to that question. He gives us a challenge and he forgets himself. Look at yourself. You flesh and bones, you that is breathing, eating, living creature, you that is able to walk and comprehend. Don't you see where you came from? Have you been blind to your own creation that you're worried about a bone? And that's the problem of arrogant people who reject God. No sign is greater than your own sign. No sign is more miraculous than you yourself. And if you yourself are not a sign to yourself, do you think anything around you is going to be a sign? If you are blind to your own creation and you don't even realize that you needed a creator, then what other sign is going to guide you? The one who created you for the first time. The one who created you, O Kafir, who rejects Allah Azza wa Jal, who rejects the day of judgment, who rejects heaven and hell. The one who created you can create all of this because all he has to say is kun fayakun. If there is one ayah that summarizes all of Surah Yasin, it is some of them say it is the, the first of the first page of the ayah, and that is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions in the Quran that uh, Inna This is the ayah that summarizes all of Surah Yasin. We are going to resurrect the dead. Without a doubt, we're going to resurrect the dead. And not only are we going to resurrect the dead, but all that they have done will also be resurrected with them. And what their legacies are and what their deeds are, all of it will be resurrected because we have recorded everything in a magnificent book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand the beauty and the blessings of Surah Yasin.